So first of all, let's take a look at what this is. This is the Road Connect app. It runs on a Mac or on Windows, and it is a free download. So the trick is, is that it only works with certain microphones, specifically the Rode NT-USB Mini at the time of this recording. And the reason for that is that the hardware within the Rode NT-USB Mini, which by the way, I'm recording with right now and I'm using Rode Connect to do the audio recording. It has some processing power in it that is used by Rode Connect to do compression, noise reduction, RL exciter, and a big bottom. So it has those four effects, and all, that's all done in the microphone itself. Now, you can actually record up to four Rode NT-USB mini microphones into Rode Connect at the same time. And in addition to that, you can record your computer's audio, and you can also record from specific apps such as Skype, Zoom, anything else where you may have a communication app where you can bring in another guest. So in total, you can record up to six channels. Now, you can actually record those channels as just a stereo mix, just mix them all together into a stereo WAV file or an MP3 file, or you can actually record them multi-track mode, so you're recording each of the microphones to a separate file, plus you're recording a mix of all of them as well, and you can choose in post which of those you want to use. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. It does record the audio in lossless WAV 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, and it also allows you to export into MP3 if you prefer to do that instead, up to 320 kbps. Now, if you do use Zoom or Skype or some other way to bring in a remote guest, it automatically creates what is called a mix minus. Now, a mix minus is a way to prevent the person who is on the other side of the call <laughs> from getting their audio echoed back from your computer. So it just makes a much more pleasant experience for them when they're participating in the recording or the live stream. Well, I'm, I'm kind of just exploring lots of different kinds of peppers now. Mm -hmm. um, and what strikes me about the salsas that I'm making is it's you just take the pepper and you just put it in the blender and that's the salsa. You just Whoa. grind that thing up and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Like no salsa. You might add a little. No, not really. I mean, like a nice hot salsa, like a nice hot creamy jalapeno salsa. The recipe is like just a bunch of jalapenos, maybe a little bit of oil. Uh, but no, not like you're not putting cilantro and tomatoes into that. It's just the, the peppers. Yeah, the full deal. Okay, that's that's eye opening to me. I have to confess. Um, what what do you think? Kind of. Um, <clears throat> What generated this love of tacos that you seem to have? <laughs> Other than the fact that there's scientific proof that tacos make people approximately 15% happier after they eat them. And, and I'm I'm assuming you have a source for that data, but <laughs> I I don't I don't disagree with that data, but <laughs> I'm sure it's rigorously peer reviewed and yeah, uh, right. been um, yeah been tested and and uh so i think one way to put this is this is basically a software version of the roadcaster pro not quite as advanced as the roadcaster pro but it can do most of what you can do with the roadcaster pro and again because the app itself is free that means the only cost for you is however many road nt usb minis you need for your particular show so if you need two that's 99 dollars each so that's a lot less expensive than going with a Rodecaster Pro or any other type of podcast recorder or even a mixing board and recorder. Now, as I mentioned before, you can bring in audio from your computer. So here, for example, I've got a track from Musicbed. I'll go ahead and play that. We'll unmute that and bring that in just a little bit here. Let's demo some of the effects as well. So I happen to be on channel number two here right now. Here's where I set my input level right here. Then we have a noise gate, compressor, exciter, and big bottom. These are basically just on off settings. There's no other settings you have to make for each of them. So let me go ahead and turn all of them off. Right now I have the noise gate on, the compressor on, and big bottom on. And now this is me with none of the effects turned on. <laughs> let me first of all leave you with a few moments of silence. I have a pretty quiet room here, but there might still be a little bit of noise floor. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and turn the noise gate on. Now the noise gate's on, and I'll be silent again for just a moment. Okay, so that's the noise gate. Next up is the compressor. Let's go ahead and turn that on. We now have the compressor on, and this is what it sounds like with the compressor. It just gives it that kind of more, a little bit more broadcasty sound to it, and it also keeps the transients, the little peaks in your waveform 
from preventing you from pushing up the overall loudness of your audio. So that's pretty helpful. Next up is the exciter. Now for my voice, exciters aren't usually really helpful. They tend to increase the high frequency, I guess, sensitivity of the audio. And this doesn't really mix well with my voice, but here's with it without. And now here's with the exciter. So she sells seashells by the seashore. Probably not a great fit for my voice, but you got that option. You can turn it on or off depending on the voice. And next up, we now have the big bottom turned on. This just gives you, again, a little bit more low frequency response and makes it sound a little bit more like a traditional broadcast type of audio recording. Now, these effects, actually, this is why the Rode NT-USB Mini is required is because this microphone has in it a digital signal processor which runs these effects, and that's why you need a Rode NT-USB Mini to work in this situation. Now, of course, if you're streaming, say, for example, with OBS, OBS can actually see the output of the Road Connect app. So you can essentially use the Road Connect as your software mixer, and then OBS can see the audio coming out of Road Connect, and it can incorporate that into your live stream. So that's how it works both as a recorder for podcasts, if you're just recording and you're going to edit later, or if you're going to stream live. Now, there are a variety of different output formats you can use. Of course, you can use WAV or you can use MP3. Again, with WAV, you can export at 48 kilohertz or 44.1 kilohertz. It'll resample for you. And also, the interesting thing with this is you can output at a certain loudness target. So, for example, if you're going to upload a podcast and you already used the compressor while you did your recording, you can change this output to minus 16 LUFS. It'll export it and it will basically be ready to go. You won't have to do very much processing or perhaps any processing at all, which is really, really nice. So it's one of those things that just makes the whole process a lot more efficient. You can also export in MP3 up to 320 K bits per second. Possibly. Uh, what a novel idea. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do a little processing on my voice here. You guys tell me if you can hear anything. We go ahead and now we turn the compressor on. Definitely hear heard it. Did you hear, so you heard it get louder, but did you hear the timbre change in any fashion? Yes. Yes. It emphasizes the deepness. Oh, yes. Oh, the deep. The, you get a little more of the low frequencies <laughs> when you turn into it, an it, FM radio announcer. It, it makes a little, it makes it a little echoey. Oh, interesting. I think. A or, little bit. Or boomy, maybe, yeah. is the right word. Okay, speaking of boomy, let's turn on the big bottom, see what we get on my voice. So now we have the big bottom. You're feeling, it feels a little wooly, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. A little bit? Yes. Some voices might benefit from that, some might not. Let's go ahead and turn the exciter on. As soon as I turn the exciter on, the question is, you... you this is going to be right for some voices. I think this actually works well on Danny's voice. Is it more S's? It's supposed to increase the high frequency response a little bit, but without making it more sibilant. Is that That's the idea. I think on my voice, it's probably a bit much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so let's go back to Danny's here. Here's without. Without the exciter. This is without the exciter. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, go ahead and do She Sells Seashells by the Seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Okay. I think that works okay on your voice. And then, Emma, why don't you do this? She sells seashells. She sells seashells by the seashore. That was without. And she sells seashells by the seashore. That's with. Now, typically... Cameras take a little bit longer to get their signal out of the HDMI port into your computer if, for example, you're doing a live stream and you're coming through a capture card or an A10 mini or something like that, versus audio, which can typically get to the computer faster. So you will have to set a little bit of an offset within OBS to make sure that they're perfectly in sync. But OBS has that capability. It's not that hard to do. All you need to do is make a recording, clap, clap and then bring that into a video editing app and count how many frames there are between when your hands actually make contact with each other versus when you hear the clap and however many frames there are between those two, that's how much of a frame offset you need to apply. Now, no product is perfect. There are two things I wanna note here. You could consider them cons or just things to keep in mind. Number one, when I attempted to plug in more than two NT USB minis into an old USB 3.0 hub I have, that worked fine, but when I tried to plug in more than two, then it wouldn't work. So I don't know if we just saturated that hub or the USB bus or whatever it was, but I had to plug the other two microphones into separate USB ports on my computer. So 
Just something to keep in mind if you were planning to run it through a hub, you may want to look at a USB 3.1 hub. I don't, I'm don't. i not entirely sure what would fix that issue, but just be careful about that. Number two, one time it happened, I plugged in all my microphones and Rode Connect didn't recognize any anything. It didn't even think there was a microphone attached, rebooted my computer, and then it was fine after that. So I, I haven't been able to recreate it again and submit it as a bug report. So um, you know, for a first generation or a 1.0 release of the app, it's surprisingly good. That was the one issue I ran into one time. Now, once it does recognize, after that reboot, it recognized all the microphones, no problem, and we were able to record. As soon as it recognizes them, we didn't run into any issues at all. Now, Rode has also released at the same time this Colors Pack, which gives you little caps to put on each of the Rode NT-USB minis that you're going to be using, just so you can keep them kind of straight and know which one is which because in the app itself you can see it has the different colors represented. So the one I'm using right now is the one with the green cap. It also comes with these little connectors to go on the road USB cables. Again, just so you can keep things straight and keep things <laughs> in order so you know which is which. At the same time, Rode has also released some new cables. So if you're not into the cable that they sent, which is a very simple, not very long cable, you can also purchase some 1.5 meter cables, both a USB-C to USB-C and a USB-C to USB-A. The microphone output itself, of course, is USB-C, so it just depends on your computer as to whether you need USB-C on the other end or USB-A on the other end. If you'd like to see our review of the Rode NT-USB Mini microphone, you can find that up here or you can find it down in the description. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.